I don't know about you, but I look at everyone I pass on the street. Their faces, the clothes they wear, the way they walk. I even look at what they're thinking. I can't see it, of course, but somehow I just know. And what I don't know, I make up. Well, that's what writers do, isn't it? I just wish I didn't do it all the time. I miss the joy of just taking a walk without butting into everyone's business with my imagination. Small orange juice, toasted English muffin, and a decaf coffee. Better? Better. Better what? You want better on your mouth? Oh, butter. No, no, no butter. No better. See, now that's interesting. He's probably, I don't know, let's say Greek. Came over to America to work in his brother's luncheonette, but he's not too happy about it. I mean, left a beautiful cafe on the Aegean Sea to come here and serve cheeseburgers. Where's the beauty in it? See, that's the kind of thing I wonder about. The thing about observing is nobody notices me observing. Except my wife, Maggie, notices. Always trying to get me to stop. You can't, Jake. You never could. Never could what? Stop. Observing, thinking, working, writing. Well, not all the time. Sometimes I'm able to you go... You were just observing the waiter. Now you're thinking about me. All right, I won't think about you. Okay. Then why am I still here? Your mind never stops, does it? Not by choice. My mind has a mind of its own. Exactly. I'm just a thought in your mind right now, popping in and out of your head on 24-hour call. Why now, Jake? What's up? I was just walking along the street, and suddenly I started to think about that first day we met. You love to play back that tape, don't you? When the present isn't working, you always go back to the past. Do it with me, Maggie. The first day we met. You do it too much, Jake. I know, I must need it. Come on, play it with me. As if I had a choice. I know, I love control. I'll start. East Hampton. Eight years ago. Almost nine. The 4th of July party at Hal and Carol's. I'm wearing a light blue Laura Ashley dress. I'm a little nervous because this is the in crowd and I am an out girl and I don't know a soul here, including the guy who brought me. Hal. Hey, Hal. Who's the girl in the light blue dress? Laura Ashley? No, not the dress, the girl. Susie, ma'am? Oh, hello, Susie. I'm Maggie. No, sushi, ma'am. Oh, sushi! <laughs> Thank you, Susie. Oh, sushi, sir? Oh, uh, no, thanks for me. Ah! Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. Would you like my napkin? Uh, well, it's an awkward place to be rubbing. Well, I wasn't going to rub it. I thought you would. That's okay. Are you, um, are you, are you here with anyone? Uh, yes, I'm with the date. Charlie something. Oh, that's odd. My date is Sybil something. Huh. Well, maybe they're related. Gee, I hope so. Are you, um, uh, are you here for the summer? Uh, no. Are you? No, no. Amazing how many things we have in common. Is your name Jake? <laughs> no, it's Maggie. Why, do I look like a Jake? No, I do. I'm just I'm just looking for a hook in this conversation. Look, um, can I buy you dinner? Oh, that's very nice of you, but um, the food here is free. <laughs> but listen, uh, it was very nice meeting you, but I really should go and find my date. This can't be goodbye. Oh, it won't be. We'll meet again. When? Well, I'll be home for dinner tonight, Jake. What? Eat your breakfast. Living out of the past isn't going to get us through the future. At least it delays it, because tonight may not be so wonderful. And that scares you, doesn't it? Because you never can control what I say when reality begins. Something wrong? Yeah, but not with the breakfast. The truth is, things are not good with Maggie and me right now. I don't look forward to tonight. In the meantime, I have a class to teach. On writing, not on living.
This is what we aspire to be, right? But you don't think it's possible. I didn't when I was your age. But you're already writers in the sense. You're driving in your car on the way to school, or you're, you're having breakfast and a luncheonette, having an imaginary conversation with your girl, your wife. She says this, you say that, you say that, she says this. She's so damn stubborn and intractable. <laughs> Only she's not saying it, you made it up. You're bright, clever, and witty. She's a pain in the ass. <laughs> you win the argument, she's not even there. What the hell kind of a victory is that? If you want to be a writer like those guys, be prepared to spend the rest of your life in your head. I never have writer's block. I have something much worse. I have writer's drivel. I'll put down any crap until the good stuff comes up. And who am I kidding? I can't write because I got Maggie on my mind. I need to talk to someone. Maybe my sister Karen. She's always encouraging, sympathetic. Loyal, loving. Of course I am. What's wrong, Jake? It's Maggie and me. We're having problems. I swear I had a feeling you were. Is she here? Do you want me to talk to her? Karen, if she were here, how could you talk to her? You're here, here in my head. I hate when that happens. I feel like such a nothing. I wish you would let me be myself. You have such a distorted picture of me. I do? Where did you find this dress I'm wearing? This dress is not me. Bet Midler does a concert in a dress like this. I'm sorry, I didn't have time to go shopping for you today. Where are you going? Should I come in there with you? Don't worry about it, Karen. It happens automatically. Ooh. Something's wrong, Jake. I know you. Tell me, sweetheart. I think Maggie's getting ready to leave me. Don't tell me. Oh, my God, no. All right, don't jump to conclusions. Remember I thought Harry was going to leave me, too? But he did leave you. Because I kept saying, you're going to leave me one day. I know it. It drove him crazy. Besides, we had big problems. You and Maggie have had eight good years together. She loves you. That I would bet my life on. She's been seeing another man. I'm such a bad judge of character. Is there something wrong with our family, Jake? Mom got divorced, Pop got divorced, I got divorced, now you're getting divorced? Mom and Pop was one divorce. I'm not divorced yet. Don't turn this into an epidemic, Karen. Have you been seeing anyone? Me? No. You haven't been seeing another woman? Didn't I just say no? Who's the other woman? An actress, about two years ago. It only lasted three weeks. You mean if it's under a month, it's not an affair? You know, every man in America is looking for a calendar like that? I hardly remember it. Truth is, I love Maggie now more than I ever have in my life. You don't want to lose her, Karen. If I lose her, I lose everything. Oh, Jake, you're so dependent on women. I've always known that. When Julie died, I thought you would never get over it. You shouldn't have married Maggie so quickly. The last thing a new bride needs is the ghost of a dead wife. There's Maggie. I hear her on the stairs. With me here? Jake, can't you stop her? She's gonna think I picked this dress out myself. Hi, hon. Hi. God, I'm tired. Thought we went to all these. Oh, you smell good. Took a shower. That's what I need. You get so grimy from ambition. She gets to dress so pretty. And I have to wear this trick-or-treat costume. Are you gonna be long? Why? Well, I just thought we'd talk. For dinner? Eat before, during, after. Really? It's been years since we've had a marathon conversation. Sure, I'll shower after. Anything I should feel nervous about? Depends on what makes you nervous. Answers like that. Jake, you're not going to bring up this other man, are you? You're asking for trouble. What do you want me to do, forget about him? No, just wait. Bring it up on your 50th anniversary. You can go now, Karen. This is private stuff. Oh, let me stay, Jake. I can wave before you say something stupid. 
Maggie, don't listen to him. He's a little cranky today. I'll be up all night if you need me, Jake. Look, I'm walking through walls. I'm having a drink, Jake. Anything for you? Jake? I'm sorry, I was just I was thinking about Karen. Yeah, I'll have a vodka. How is Karen? Mm, she's fine. I haven't seen her for a while. Nobody knew in her life here. Still going to film school? She just made a four-hour student film of her sitting on a kitchen chair called Loneliness. This isn't what you want to talk about, is it, Jake? No. Something else, then? Yes. Okay. What? I'm thinking. Looking for a topic? No, I want to get the first sentence right. It's important. It's the, it's the writer in me. I'm always afraid of losing my audience. I've read all 12 of your books, Jake. Trust me. What is your first sentence? Do you want out of this marriage? Well, you certainly got your audience, didn't you? Where did this come from? I don't know where, Maggie. Tell me. Whoa! I gave you time to think of your first sentence. Give me time to get my second wind. Why does this come up now, Jake? Did something happen today that's never happened before? Yes. What? I decided to ask you. I see. Well, I guess sleeping back to back for the past few weeks doesn't make this too much of a surprise. All right. You want to know if I want out of this marriage? The answer is no. I don't want out of this marriage. Well, I'm glad to hear it. So everything's fine. I didn't say it was. I didn't think it was. No, everything is not fine, Jake. Does that come as a shock to you? No, it's, it's been obvious for months. So why hasn't either one of us talked about it before? We talk about it every day. And the lack of warmth we show each other. The way you sometimes don't even acknowledge me when I walk in the door. On those nights, I'm lucky enough to still be up when you come in. Yes, I have been working more than I used to. Moving up the corporate ladder has its drawbacks. Where are we going with this, Jake? I don't know, Maggie. Are we in trouble, or, or are, are we in big trouble? I love how I get to be the one on the witness stand. I don't know, Jake. We're in trouble, which is more than we've ever been before, so the size of it seems irrelevant. Do you realize I don't even know what you're feeling right now? Are you unhappy? Are you, are you angry? Bored with our don't, lives? Jake, no, don't, Jake. Don't Why can't you just me. tell me what you feel? Claustrophobic, airless, suffocating. I can't believe I'm saying these things. This is dangerous, Jake. Let's just put it off for a while. Maybe it'll go away in the morning. Go away? After claustrophobic? Airless? Suffocating? Those words have a certain permanency. They tend to stick to your ribs. You wanted this conversation, Jake, not me. All right, all right. We're, we're into it now. Let's, let's get on with it. All right. I have a first sentence for you. How about separating for six months, just to give us some breathing space? Separate for six months? That's, that's kind of a lot of breathing space. That's about as big as Arizona. Do you actually think if we're apart for six months, we'll be able to get back together again? Why not? Why not? Because half of our problems are based on the fact that we're apart three or four months out of the year to start with. So I don't understand how separating is the answer to being separated so much. I need time, Jake. For what? For myself. I feel lost. I feel out of control. I feel like I'm skiing down a mountain without a pole, and there's nothing but rocks and trees at the bottom. So maybe I could be there to catch you. Catch me? I thought you were the one that pushed me. I didn't mean that. Jake, don't you see how much I've changed? I can't stop running. I'm running for taxis, for elevators, for planes. I'm running for analyst sessions and lunch appointments. I'm jogging 12 miles every week, and it's still not far enough or fast enough. Is it me you're running from? I love you. I love you too, Jake. At least we have that to hang on to. That's worth waiting six months for, isn't it? It's also worth staying here and fighting for. No, I don't want to fight for it. I have tried so hard this year to talk to you, but you never listen to me. Not even to what I'm saying to you now. You want it to be better without even wanting to know what's wrong. I don't know what else to say. Right now, I just want to shower more than anything else in the world. Maggie? Yes? Does Michael Jaffe have anything to do with this? 
What? Michael Jaffe. Wrong name or just the wrong time to say it? What are you talking about? I'm talking about Michael Jaffe. I know very little about him except what you've told me. He seems very bright. Everybody in the office likes him. The jogger. You went jogging with him when you were in Chicago that time. Isn't that what you told me? Must be very nice for somebody like you who's running all the time. There's someone to run with. Am I right, Meg? I'm not going to get into one of these discussions. Oh, come on, Maggie. Get into it. Are you having an affair with him or not? No answer. Does that mean you're not having an affair with him? No. No. So you're not having an affair with him? No. Let me rephrase the question. Have you slept with him? Yes. 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 What the hell did I ask that for? I'm sorry, Jake. I was smart enough to figure it out and dumb enough to make you say it. I shouldn't have said it. The truth doesn't fix anything. No, no, it just makes it clearer. It's not an affair because it ended as soon as it started. But it happened. And I'm sorry. Let's not say anything more because we're just going to end up hurting each other. Well, I think we passed that a minute ago. Did... Did you ever? <sighs> I'm sorry. Guilt is so great, I'm trying to make it easy on myself. Did you ever do anything in all the years we were married? You don't have to answer that, but maybe I'd feel better if I knew. Did you? If I said yes, would it make any difference about the separation? No. Well, then my answer would be meaningless, wouldn't it? Nothing we do is meaningless. All right, all right, I'll tell you. No, it doesn't really matter. Exchanging guilts isn't exactly going to save the day. I didn't even get the opportunity to lie. Which I don't think I would have. Uh, of all the imaginary conversations I have, 10, 20, 50 a day, why did this have to be a real one? I warned you, Jake, didn't I? You didn't want to hear the truth. Right. Like every woman wants to hear her husband had an affair. How did I get myself into this mess? She told you how, by not paying enough attention to her. Instead of writing, you should have been jogging up the walls with her. Good night, Karen. I wish you would stop flying me in and out of your mind. I'm getting air sick. Maybe you didn't notice, but I changed my dress. Not without my help. If it's help you want, why don't you speak to Edith? Analysts don't work nights. That's when they have their own breakdowns. I don't mean really talk to her. Make up that you talk to her. Some session. I make up my questions and her answers. Like you were doing good when you said, who's this Michael Jaffe guy? That was... I'm going. I'm going. I know that look already. Just what I need. A session you make up that I don't get paid for. So, what is it this time, Mr. Imagination? Edith, please, I'm shopping for a little compassion. Oh, what's the matter with baby? She actually does that in sessions. It's the new age analysis, make the patient feel like a dork. Is that what I'm here for, to set up straight lines for you? Edith, I'm lost, I'm confused. I had an affair with someone, but I don't want to leave Maggie. She slept with someone, and she does want to leave. So, what's your point? Your affair wasn't as good as the guy she slept with? Forget it, Edith. You're not an analyst. You're a mother with a diploma. And what are you, a martyr, a self-made sufferer? Don't you know you're better than that, Jake? You're a warm, loving, giving human being with incredible sensitivity. And Maggie doesn't even appreciate that. You really think so? I don't know. They're your words. I'm just moving my lips. Edith, this is my last session, real or not. And then I'm going to find another analyst to help me understand why I went to you for so long. 
Can I suggest someone? My son, Arthur, just started his own practice. He's in California, but it's worth the trip. You know what I would like to do to you right now? I would like to either punch your face out with my fist or throw you on the sofa and have my way with you. I know what my choice would be. Which do you prefer? Forget it. It's just wishful thinking. When you wish, you wish upon the child in you. You know who said that. Jiminy Cricket? No, me. Didn't you read my book? Love Yourself, Screw Them, was that the title? Oh, you're so naughty. How's your sex life, Jake? God, my sex life? Do you think Maggie and I are going at it eight hours a day while we discuss a breakup? Well, maybe if you did, you wouldn't be breaking up. Edith, I am so tired of your fortune cookie wisdom. Have you ever actually cured anyone? Analysis doesn't cure you. It just makes you feel better between sessions. You know, I should have married you instead of Maggie. Then I wouldn't be so unhappy about the marriage breaking up. You know what I think? I think you won't hit me so you can avoid anger. You're not having sex with Maggie so you can avoid loving. And you're not taking this session seriously so you can avoid hearing the truth. How did you figure that out? Easy. You're a Sagittarius. You know, you better give me your son's number, because you are ludicrous. You make Karen foolish, you make me ludicrous. Is this your way of getting back at women because Julie died and Maggie stands up to you? I'm handling this the best way I can. I've got one dead wife and one on the way out the door. What do you want, a tap dance? You're unhappy if you want to be. You're lonely if you want to be. It's your choice. I don't get it. If you want to suffer, you suffer. If you want to be fat, you're fat. We make our own destiny. Is that why you're still unmarried? No, most men are creeps. How do you get out of here? There are no doors. I'll let you out if you answer one question. If you could have anything you wanted in the world right now, this minute, this second, what would you ask Don't for? Don't do this to me. Answer me, Jake. What would you ask you know for? What I'd ask then for. say stop it. it. Ask Just for it, then I'll stop, stop it. Ask Julie! I want Julie! I want her alive, the way I remember her. Where do you remember her most? In Vermont. She was 21 and I was 26. Up near her parents' cabin by the lake. Everything was just beginning. Come on, somebody. Just give me a nibble. I promise I'll throw you back. Julie! Hey, Julie! It came! I just got it! What came? I sold the story to the New Yorker! 150 bucks! Well, don't just stand there! Come on out! There are no boats! You don't need a boat! You're a success! Walk on the water! Oh, come on! Give me a nibble! I want you to meet the guy I'm going to marry. <laughs> and I knew the first true happiness I've ever known in my life. We looked up at the sky, dreaming about what the rest of our lives would be like. And I want the rest of our lives. Can you get me Julie back, Edith? No. And don't play games with me. No. I don't play games, Jake. You do. Isn't that what you're doing now? Yes. Why? Because in games, I never lose. And when I lose, I can rewrite. Don't jump into any decisions about Maggie. And don't say no to everything. Remember, you always have options. Options. I love how my voice trails off. Options. 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 Can we talk? Sure. You feeling any better? No. 
Just cleaner. How about you? Tired. Trauma always exhausts me. I'm scared, Jake. I've never been this scared in my life. So what do we do? I would like to try and save this marriage the only way I know how. By giving it up for a little while. You can't keep what you give up. Why not? You did it with me for eight years. I did? Well, I, what, what, what did I keep? Well, Julie, for one. She may have died, but you never let her go. Wherever we moved to, wherever we traveled, we always took Julie with us. She wasn't with us, Maggie. She was just a memory. And I had to live with your memories, Jake. You never changed your life to accommodate mine. You devoted so much of this marriage to trying to become chairman of the board. I never saw you for half that time. Just because you worked at home, Jake, doesn't mean you were here for me. And when I did come home, I always felt as if you were expecting someone else. And so to make you happy, I let you make me into whatever you wanted. Whatever I wanted. You are so consumed with trying to create your own images and characters. You plan every detail of their lives. And the minute I tried to step out of my own to be someone that I created, that I controlled, you made me feel like a plagiarist. I mean, I wasn't even breathing my own air anymore. And so one day in Chicago, I let myself become a very bad little girl. The next morning, I looked in the mirror, and I sure didn't like what I saw. But I saw the possibility of becoming someone who would have to be accepted on her own terms. I am thrilled with being a rewrite of someone else. And until you get to see me, Jake, my Maggie, I am getting out of this house, out of this life, and out of your computer. I may be making the biggest mistake of my life, but at least it'll be mine. Give us both a break, Jake. Don't fight it. Fight what? You've already made up your mind. There were two of us in the ring, Jake. I'll try and move some of my things out in the morning. This is going to be hard on Molly. She's the one part of Julie I have always envied. She means a great deal to me. She's a strong kid. She'll be all right. Still, it's the second time she's losing a mother. And the third time I'm losing a child. I wanted those babies as much as you, Maggie. Things might have been different for us. Maybe. But as bad as those nights in the hospital were, I thought they were the closest we've ever been to each other. I may not see you in the morning. I think I'll drive up to Molly's school. Tell her I'll call her in a few days, will you? I know that nothing in life ever hurts you as much as Julie dying. Well, tonight is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. chance to rewrite today. So how do I break the news to Molly? Casually? How's college, hon? Oh, by the way, Maggie and I are separating. Yes, I know. Molly, why are you so young? You look about 11 or 12. Is there some reason I'm thinking of you like this? Yes. You need a little girl to tell you she loves you. That doesn't count. All little girls love their daddies. Sandra Gutman hates hers. Why? I don't know. I made it up. I thought it would make you feel better. No, hon. I made it up, not you. I know. So did it make you feel better? Yeah. You fool yourself a lot, don't you? You got it. Why are you and Maggie breaking up? Well, it's, it's complicated. Is it because you both had an affair? Hey, you're too young to talk about stuff like that. I'm sorry. So where are you driving to? Up to see you in college. 
I'm in college now? Neat. That means I get to skip high school. She's out at the beach house now, so she'd call you in a day or two. So that's where it stands. I'm sorry, Dad. I am too. What are you gonna do now? Work, like I always do, which is why I think I'm in the mess I'm in now. Look, maybe it's not my place to say this. Sure it is. This is your place. You can say whatever you want. What? I think Mom has something to do with all this. Well, Maggie won't fight you on that. I swear, Molly, I never try to think of her. She just, your mom had such a strong spirit. She just bursts into my head whenever she feels like it. <laughs> whenever she feels like it. She's been dead for 10 years. Well, she doesn't think so. OK, here's what you do. Tell her to stop. You don't know your mother. Oh, I guess I don't. Oh, God, I'm sorry, Molly. It was a thoughtless no, thing for me to say. No, it wasn't. I brought it up. Look, I've got to go to my next class. Do you want to meet me for lunch? How about dinner? Thought I'd drive up to the lake. It's only about an hour from here. Sure. Love you. Say hello to Mom for me. you been what I've been waiting all morning for you after last night don't you at least want to know how I feel about what about what about what happened to us Julie I'm sorry I've had a rough couple of days what happened to us I don't believe this we made love we did for the first time Jake not just our first time my first time ever and you don't even remember it the next morning oh that first time yes I do I just didn't realize you were going back to 29 years ago. I'm not going back 29 years. I'm going back to last night. All right, okay, all right, whatever you say. It's just that this, this conversation comes at a very bad time for me. Maggie and I broke up last night. Who is Maggie? I told you about her. She's my second wife. Well, she could be your first wife for all I care because I'm not sure you and I are ready for marriage. Julie, please, don't mix up my time zones. I'm a writer, not a computer. Come on, Jake. You sold one little short story to The New Yorker. Don't make it sound like you're on the bestseller list. I have been, five times. Out of 12 novels, that's not bad. 12 novels? Which ones? Well, you wouldn't have heard of them because I didn't write them yet. I mean, I did write them, but I just thought of you now, and you're here before I would have written them. In other words, if I had thought of you later... All right, then... fine. I get it, I got it, fine. You do get it. I said I did, I get it. How old are you? 21. How old am I? 26. You don't get it. Look at me. Come here. Look at me. Get up. Look closely. Oh. You see what I mean? You're in your late 30s? I wish. Look closer. Come here. Come here. Look at the gray in my hair. Look at my skin. Look at my eyes. Oh, God. Jake, you're old. You're my father's age. No, I'm not. He was 58 then. I'm only 56. You're 56? And I slept with you last night? It wasn't last night. It was way back. No, forget it. Forget it. What, why? What, you think I look awful? No, not awful. Mature. Well, you're a little bulkier. Is that the wrong word? You can't imagine. Well, I do like the wrinkles around your eyes and under them. It gives you character. It's nice. Stick around. You'll love arthritis and senility. I don't care. Last night was still wonderful. Oh, 
Oh, Jake. I miss you so much when you're not here. Julie, don't. Is that the wrong thing to say? Oh, no. God, no. You make me want to hear more. And crawl into that place you're in now and stay there with you forever. We can't do that, Julie. We're not in the same place. I gotta get out of here before I lose myself forever. I'm confused, Jake. Is this some sort of dream? Yes, for me. It's a memory. You're the memory, and I'm the present, and there's no future. Because we can never be together the way we once were. That life is gone. Can you understand what I'm saying? Oh, Jake. Oh, God, Jake. Are you dead? I haven't got the heart to tell her. Karen, help me. What is it, Jake? She thinks I'm the one who died. What will I tell her? That's not for us to do, Jake. Maybe a priest or a rabbi. Julie, it wasn't me. It was you. That died? <laughs> oh, I'm so relieved. I hate it when somebody I love dies. Such a sweet girl. But a little naive, no? Now I see why you brought me back. It's mostly when you're in trouble, isn't it? Join the club, honey. And now you're here because Angie is leaving you? No, Maggie. Maggie is leaving me. Edith, what do I do? He has to call me all the way up here on my lunch break. Why do you call me only when you're in trouble? That's not fair, Jake. You used the beginning of the best part of my life to get through the worst part of yours. Make up your mind, Jake. Is this time for me or for her? This is interesting. This is fascinating. I can't follow it, but it's riveting. Because if you need me now, Jake, I'm here for you. The thing is, I don't know if I can do it like this. Like what? Being 21. I'm too young. I'm too inexperienced. How can I help you when I don't even know what life is about yet? Make me older, Jake. Make me 36. Oh, I can't do that, Julie. He wants her younger. She wants to be older. Can you imagine? Only a dead woman would think like that. I'm doing it. I'm going inside. When I come out, I'll be 36. Stop it, Julie. I can't do it. Why not? Because you never were 36. I wasn't? Oh. How old did I get to be? 35. That's very young, isn't it? This is the sad part. I think I'm gonna go shopping. Don't make it too depressing, Jake. Remember, you just slept with the girl last night. Because I'm 21. It hasn't happened yet. Tell me, Jake. It was an auto accident coming back from New Hampshire at the end of June. Were you in the car? No. I had a meeting in New York. I took a flight out in the morning and you drove back by yourself. What were we doing in New Hampshire? I'm taking Molly to camp. Molly? You don't know who Molly is? Oh, God. We had a girl? <laughs> when? She was 24. She was born on April 19th. <laughs> We had a baby. We had a little girl. <laughs> oh, what is she like? Oh, she's like you. Beautiful, smart, impetuous. <laughs> she's at college now at Brown. Brown? Is that all right? Yes, it's wonderful. Why did you pick Brown? I didn't. You did. You said if we ever had a child, you wanted her to go to Brown. No, I said Bennington. I thought you said brown. So, tell me about us. Were we a happy family? <laughs> what did we do in the summers? Did we have a dog? 
Yeah, a yellow Labrador. Oh, perfect. What was his name? Bark. Bark? I asked him his name, and he said... Bark! <laughs> All right. So what about the summers? We rented a farmhouse in Maine. All my dreams are coming true. Oh, Jake, I wish we could have lived for the rest of our lives. We did. I got everything I wanted, didn't I, Jake? Almost. Her first word, uh, let's see. Oh, I know, I know. Supercalifragilistic. Oh, go away. <laughs> oh, my God, it's almost nine. I had a dinner date with Molly. Can I come? To a restaurant? You mean we eat inside and you'll get takeout? I can't believe I spent the whole afternoon like this. This is not healthy for me, Julie. Jake? Do you think I can see her? See Molly? Well, I have tons of pictures at home, but then where would I send them? Bye, Julie. Not pictures, Jake. I want to see Molly. You mean Molly? Molly, how would I do that? Bring I'm not coming back, Julie. I'll never get back into the real world. Well, then I'll come to your place. Bring her, Jake. She won't see you, Julie. She won't hear you. Well, then think of her the way you think of me. Then we'll be able to talk together. You owe this to me, Jake. I do. For making me come only when you need me. Well, now I need you. Do it on my birthday, October 12th. Lunch with Molly and Julie. No lunch. Don't turn this into science fiction. Goodbye. For example, I'm six years old, and I'm sitting in the kitchen with my mother. On the floor, she sees a roach, and she takes a newspaper and she zaps it. And I say to her, where do roaches come from? And she says, from the dirt. And I say, you mean they like to eat the dirt? And she says, no. The dirt turns into roaches. And I go back to my room, and I think, the dirt turns into roaches. <laughs> and suddenly, the realization hits me. My mother is dumb. <laughs> and instinctively, I realize that six years old is too soon to find out your mother is dumb. I mean, I'm banking my entire childhood on this woman taking care of me. Which means I'm either going to turn out to be neurotic or a writer. So I became both. The only one I ever trusted was Molly. Like the first time she and Maggie met. As sure as I was of Maggie, it was Molly whose stamp of approval I needed. I love some foos, don't you? I have to go to the ladies' room. Again? That's three times since we got here. I know. Girls my age do that. I'm sorry I'm late. Mm. My boss called a meeting for 6 o'clock. I almost quit my job. Where's Sally? Molly. Oh, Molly. In the ladies' room. When she comes out, you'll see her fourth new hairstyle. Uh, you need a drink. No. A kiss. I just gave you one. Uh, mm. You missed it. Mm. What's this? Oh, I got her a gift. It's a book. It's all I could think of. Perfect. It's not the thought that counts. It's the book. Oh. What is it? I don't know. I, I had a woman in my office get something for a child. She has an 11-year-old, too. Oh, I'm talking fast, aren't I? Oh, I'm scared, Jake. What if she doesn't like me? Impossible. But what if she doesn't? Well, then I'd get you an egg roll and ask you to leave. You wouldn't? No, of course I wouldn't. That's a joke. Really? Did I tell you I have absolutely no sense of humor? I just noticed. It's OK. I'll get you a tutor. For a sense of humor? No, that was a joke, too. Oh. 
Listen, I have a confession to make. I've been in this restaurant before, and I got very, very sick. Oh, well, we can go somewhere else. No, 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 no. You told me it's Molly's favorite. I don't want to disappoint her. If I get sick, I get sick. Well, she'd love that. She wants to be a doctor. Okay. Now, that was a joke. No, it wasn't. Damn. They're so hard to spot. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. How are you? I must be Maggie. <sighs> Terrific sense of humor, huh? Oh, I got you a gift, Molly. It's a book. Oh, did I spoil the surprise? I sort of guessed. Thank you. Shall I open it now? Oh, please, please. The suspense is killing me. The Baseball Encyclopedia. I forgot my friend had a little boy. No, it's perfect. I'm really into baseball. Well, you'll be into this one for about 12 years. Anybody hungry besides me? Oh, I'm starved. I really, really love this restaurant. You know, Sung Fu's was in the paper last week. You see that booth? Three men were killed in there. Really? What were they eating? No, they were shot. It's not on the menu. You have to ask for it. <laughs> oh, I thought you were serious. That's funny. Oh, it was. Well, thank you, Molly. Oh, oh, that means so much to me. Would you all excuse me for a minute? I've been so excited about this meeting today, I forgot to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so what do you think? What a relief. Some of the others you introduced me to were really doozies. He didn't ask for an in-depth analysis of my social life. You think you should keep seeing her? No. No? I think you should marry her. Soon. What's the rush? She might change her mind. About me? Come on, I'm the catch of the year. I know, but the years go by fast. And if you two elope, can I go too? Sure, bring your friends, I'll get a bus. What you think means a lot to me, Mom. Six months since Maggie left. And I haven't written a word worth processing. I'll tell you the truth, I really miss her. Not that I haven't been dating now and then. And does not live by abstinence alone. But recently, here in the privacy of my home, I've been visited by a new and fresher hell. No longer do I summon up the Ediths and Karens and Mollies of my life to get me through sleepless nights. Now they come on their own. Uninvited, unsummoned, unstoppable. Well, who else is gonna look after you? This place is a bigger mess than the inside of your mind. Who sent for you, Karen? I sent for myself. Look at you, exhausted, rings under your eyes. How can you sleep running around like a lunatic with every woman you bump into? I do not run around with every woman I bump into. I'm very selective. Sure. If they're a woman, you select them. Like that new one. That Sheila woman. Don't say that Sheila woman. I hate that expression. It sounds like a bad television series. I only use that expression because I can't keep up with all your women. Four. Four women in six months. Peggy, Kathy, Myra, Dana, and Sheila. Five. Five women in six months. Susan wasn't a woman? Two nights. That lasted two nights. So what does that make her? Half a woman? It makes her someone I'm not interested in. You go out with women you're not interested in? You have to go out with them before you find out you're not interested, don't you? You can't tell right away. I can. Good. You go out with them. If you have a good time, let me know, and I'll go out with them. Why is 
is it, whenever I try to help you, you push me away. You're that way with all women. You're so, so standoffish. I'm standoffish with women? I'm a thousand times more comfortable with women than I am with men. I never even think of a man. Here, look, look, I'm thinking of Pop. Uncle Josh. My best friend, Marty. You see a man in here? I happen to love women. No, no. What you love is the idea of loving women. Oh. You even love to love women who love you because you're standoffish. But intimacy, uh-huh, that you're afraid of. What? I said, uh-huh, that you're afraid of. I couldn't be more intimate with women. My intimacy scares them, if you want to know the truth. And if I'm so standoffish, how come I'm the one who stayed and everybody else left? Mom is gone, Julie's gone, Maggie's left, Molly's out on her own, Peggy, Kathy, Myra, Dana, none of them worked out. It's just me talking to you, telling me what I'm telling you to say. Maggie. Maggie, you've come back. Can't get your mind off her, can you? Damn it, don't do that. Do what? You put me in her dress, not me. Well, take it off, will you? Not here. Go inside. Why do you do things like that? Me? You think I like to humiliate myself like this? Have you seen... Maggie, since she's back from Europe, I hear she looks beautiful. How would I know where Maggie is? You think Maggie is all I have on my mind? Of course not. It's just a coincidence that everyone is wearing her dress today. Now listen, stay out of her closet, the both of you. Maggie's closet is empty just like your life, Jake. Oh, yeah? I'm doing fine. I happen to be seeing someone terrific. Oh? Who? That Sheila woman. Well, I know for a fact that he dialed Maggie's number last night, got scared, and hung up on the first ring. I hung up? I never hung. And even discussing a thing like that in front of my sister is the most unethical thing I ever heard. I think he needs a vacation. He can make believe he's in Paris for two weeks. Oh, my God. I can see them in the mirror. They're really here. Sheila won't last. No one will. Unless he lets go of the past. Excuse me, girls. I'm going to the bathroom. If he took the time to meet someone decent, he wouldn't turn them down. The trouble is, he wouldn't know who the right woman was if he... Met her, for God's sakes. Who are you calling? I'm calling you. <laughs> At 420. I'm with a patient. I pity whoever it is. Hello, eat it. That's not me. That's my answering machine. Wait for the beep. God, do I have to listen to the entire album of Man of La Mancha? Okay, now. Eat it. It's Jake. I'm at home. I'm having one of those things we talked about. This time it's you and Karen dissecting me like a frog in biology. Call me back as soon as you can. By the way, Karen, I think I've met a man. Very attractive, very wealthy, recently widowed. In fact, he's the patient I'm having a session with right now. Isn't it unethical to date your own patient? Yes. But if this thing gets serious, I'll tell him he's cured. Unbelievable. Hello. Edith, thank you for calling back. Yeah, they're sitting here right now. They keep putting on Maggie's dress. No, Maggie's not here, just her dress. He makes us wear it, then blames us. Shh! He's talking to me. No, 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 this is real. I can even see them in the mirror. I can tell what perfume they have on. Some crap he probably has me wearing. Shh! It scares me, Edith. Does it scare you? No, Jake, it doesn't scare me. Will you let me talk to you? For God's sake. Excuse me, Edith. It's driving me nuts. I gotta get rid of them. What should I do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I hope this isn't gonna be like Ghostbusters. All right, I'll try it. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.
This won't be easy, Jake. Trust me. You leave my father alone. What is wrong with you people? If you really loved him, you would stop bothering him. Now you please get out. Well, she'll be in analysis one day. You'll see. Go on. Go! Voila. Thanks, Molly. You can go back to growing up now. Anytime, Dad. I'll tell you how low I've sunk. I never spoke to Edith on the phone. I called my service and had them call me back. Molly was my idea. I actually made a phone call pretending I was speaking to the real Edith so I could scare the Edith and the Karen in my head out of here. I tricked myself and I fell for it. I'll tell you, the thing about going crazy is it makes you incredibly smart in a stupid sort of a way. You too, Sheila. I've had enough of this today. But look, 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 look at my hand shaking. Please, go like the rest of them or I'll call Molly. There is nothing in that entire sentence I understand. Sheila, is that really you? Well, of course it's me. I called you all morning. I got scared and opened the door with the key you gave me. Oh, Sheila, I'm so glad you're here. Where were you so long? I've been waiting all day for you. You haven't been here all day. I know. I was waiting somewhere else. I had things to do. Oh, you look so good, so pretty, so sweet. So, how are you? Are you all right? You look discombobulated. No, no, I'm bobulated. No, I was working mostly. Have you been sleeping? While I work? No, you have to be awake to work. Oh, I see what you mean. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Sheila. I know, I, know, I know I'm not making sense lately. I know. God, did I say bobulated? I can't get my thoughts together. My mind keeps stuttering, sputtering, skittering. What's the word I want? For what? For when your mind makes jumps, splintering, scattering. Damn, I can't think straight. Staggering, stammering, faltering. Stop it, Jake. Give your mind a rest. I can't. I'm going through this thing, a, a writer thing. A block. No, not a block. Yes, a block. Digressions, distractions, dissections. No, not dissections. Delusions. Delusions? Like delusions. I veer off. I wander. I stray. I roam. I fade off into other places. Well, I can see that. You can. Oh, oh no. Oh, God, not about you, Sheila. Oh, no, oh, no. I depend on you. You comfort me. You support me. You hold me together. I hardly see you. Well, I've been busy. But when you are here, Sheila, you're so real. I love that you're real. Nobody is real anymore. Well, I try to be real. Well, you look real, you smell real, you feel real. <laughs> flesh and blood. I love flesh and blood. Some people don't have it, you know. Flesh and blood? They're superficial. You can see right through them. Well, maybe you can see their reflection in the mirror, but they're not really there. I've met people like that. <laughs> I can introduce you to a room full. But you, Sheila, you're so dimensional. Dimensional? Dimensional. You have sides. You have form. You have matter. Good, firm, solid matter. Well, I work out in a gym a lot. No, that kind of matter doesn't matter. Listen to what I'm saying. You know how people are always coming in and out of your life, in a door, out a door, this one's here, that one's there. You know that feeling? Well, I don't entertain as much as you. Right, exactly. My trouble is I work too much. There's so many things I let go by, things I want to do. Like what? I don't know, maybe travel. I, you know, you know something? I should travel more. We never travel. We went to Quebec. Was that you? Oh, Quebec, of course. Yeah, oh, well, there's, there's more than Quebec, you know. There's Europe, there's Africa, Japan. Have you ever been to Japan? No, it's so far away. Okay, China. Why don't we go to China, Sheila? Well, when are you talking about? Next month. Next week. How about next week? Next week? But, Jake, my vacation isn't for eight months. Well, you could tell them it's an emergency. An emergency vacation to China? All right, forget China. How about India? Bombay, Calcutta! have a three-day weekend, Jake. All right, I got a better idea. You know what I want to do? I want to move. Move what? My life, my apartment. It's time I move, Sheila. 
Let's move. You want me to move in with you? Yes. Not now. Someday. Later on. In the future. So what are you saying? I just said it. Move in with me. But not now. Someday. Later on. Why does that sound like a negative to me? It's not a negative. It's a positive negative. It's a cautious enthusiasm. What I'm trying to say is I care for you, and I want you to be with me someday, somewhere, somehow. Really? I know you cared for me, but you never really said how much. Didn't I just say I love you? No, you said you cared for me. That's different. So what are you saying? Have I been, have I, have I been like... Like cold to you? Or? No, never cold. You're warm and affectionate. But you always keep your distance. Sort of standoffish. Mm. Am I the first one who ever said that to you? Standoffish? I, I don't think so. I don't recall anyone ever saying that. Well, maybe standoffish is too strong. Maybe a lack of intimacy. Can we get off this, Sheila? We're in a holding pattern here. We're not moving this along. Jake, you seem very confused. I'm not confused. Well, a little confused. I can't get my visions focused. Is it an eyeglass thing? No, I see great. Why am I having trouble with this? Because you're not really interested. You're kidding yourself, Jake. I am not kidding myself. Kidding yourself? About what? About you. About us, about you and me. Don't sit there, Sheila. I'm having trouble with that chair. Have a seat over here. This is nice. I think you and I should start seeing each other on a regular basis. You mean every night? Yes, every night. Well, no, not every night. On nights that you don't have something else to do, or I don't. But most nights. Can we do that? Count me what? in. Sheila, uh, I have some personal things to say to you. Huh? How about in the bedroom? In the bedroom? Yeah. You mean now? Yeah, yeah. But, Jake, I only have about 20 minutes. Ten's his usual limit, honey. Because you fell asleep. I never really liked this place anyway. I feel cramped in this house. Now look at this neighborhood. The neighborhood is running down. Ah, oh, but Jake, it has such charm. And it has no charm. Some people think it does, but it doesn't. Ask Sheila if it has charm. Stay out of this. I am. You say it doesn't have charm? I believe you. Come inside, Sheila. I want to show you what I've done with the dining room. You know where I'd really like to live. No, where? The Upper East Side. Really? Oh, I love it there. You like the Upper East Side, Sheila? Everybody likes the Upper East Side. So what have you done with the dining room? Nothing. That's why I want to move. So well, what about the Upper East Side? I thought you liked Brooklyn Heights. I do like Brooklyn Heights. I didn't say you did. I know. I mean, Brooklyn Heights is a good idea, too. Of course, Bedford Village is beautiful. I know Bedford Village is beautiful. Yes, I hear it is, too. So why don't you go see it, Jake? Why don't we go see it, Jake? Sheila? Come on, Sheila. Let's go see it. Now? Well, I have to get back to work. Besides, it would be dark by the time we got there. You could stay at the Bedford Inn. We could stay at the Bedford Inn. Jake, I wish you could hear yourself. You want to go to China, Japan, Africa, Calcutta. Then you want to move to the Upper East Side, Brooklyn Heights, and Bedford Village. Nobody can change their mind that fast. He can. I can. Well, I can't. I'm not a writer, Jake. I'm a decorator. If I wanted to live on the Upper East Side, I would investigate the Upper East Side. I know. Or if I wanted to live in Brooklyn Heights, I know. I would investigate Brooklyn, Brooklyn Heights. Brooklyn Heights, I know. Or if I wanted to live in Bedford Village. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, Jake. Live where you want. I just think you should investigate one place at a time. I will, I will, I will, I will. You won't, you won't, you won't, you won't. Will you butt out of this? Listen, I don't have to talk at all. What is with you? You're either being negative or constructive or logically positive or destructively cautious. You tell me that I have dimensions and form and matter that doesn't matter. You tell me that you care for me and say you said you love me when you never said you love me. You want me to move in with you, but not now, later, sometime in the future. Someday, somehow, somewhere over the rainbow. Make up your mind, Jake. I can't take any more of this. My hair is starting to fall out. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Forgive me. Don't beg her, Jake. I'm not begging. Who asked you to? Don't leave, Sheila. I'm not. Just don't corner me, Jake. I get very nervous when I get cornered. I'm not. I know you need your space. That's why I think we should go up to Bedford Village right now. All right, fine. You want to go to Bedford Village, then let's go. Right. <sighs> There's a lot of traffic now. You waited too long. Well, there's a lot of traffic now. We waited too long. You asked me two minutes ago. What is wrong with you, Jake? Tell her, Jake. You know damn well what's wrong. It's you. Oh, it's me. It's my fault. I'm the one whom you can't remember who you took to Quebec. I'm the one who wants to shake up their life and get their visions focused. How'd you like to hear that voice for the rest of your life? Get out! I want you out of my house right now. You hear me? Yes, I hear you. Well, not you, Sheila. You promised to stay. I'll get rid of her. I'll call Edith. Shall I dial for you? If you don't stop, I'll kill you! Ah! Run for your life, Sheila. That's what I did. Ah! Wait, 
wait, wait, Sheila, Sheila, wait. No, 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 no. Don't go, don't go. Sheila, Sheila. Oh, that was fun. Bitchy, but fun. Why did you do that, Maggie? What was the point of that? Because you didn't have the guts to do it yourself. So you act like a lunatic. Sheila thinks she's well out of it, and you're off the hook. You never get your hands dirty, do you, Jake? You don't think much of me, do you, Maggie? You wrote this scene, Jake. You're the one who doesn't think I think much of you. I gotta stop this. I, I can't live like this. When is this gonna stop? Who knows? Look for a catharsis. A bolt of lightning. A miracle. A catharsis, a bolt of lightning, and a miracle. Where am I supposed to go shopping for that? Not my problem, Jake. Try the men's department. I ask her for some advice, she gives me a, an exit line. No, I gave her the exit line. I give everybody an exit line. Well, damn it, I'm not doing it anymore. That's it. It's over. It's done. I'm not doing it anymore. You think that was a catharsis? Have you talked to anybody about this? Sure, everybody. Only none of them were real. Except Sheila, who must be in Montana by now. I hope this isn't an occupational hazard. What do you mean? Well, I haven't told you, but I've been writing some stories in my spare time. Really? How'd you like to have a daughter as a writer? I'd be thrilled if that's what you want. But keep them separate, Molly. What? Your work and your life. Please, promise me. Promise. What do you know? I got my bolt of lightning. October 12th. October 12th. You remembered. I didn't sleep a wink last night wondering if you were going to send for me or not. And you did, didn't you, Jake? I did, I know. I mean, otherwise, what would you be doing here? But the, the thing is, Julie, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Oh, you always say that. So, how do you think I look at 35? Just beautiful. Yeah. Can I see what I'm wearing? Where's the mirror? I want to see how you dress me. Right there. I remember this jacket. This was your favorite. And that little chocolate stain is gone. Yeah, I had it cleaned, and then I gave it to Molly. She asked for it. I'm glad. <laughs> so this is 35. You feel any different? No. I don't look much different either. I've hardly aged. Well, it's your birthday. I didn't have the heart. Damn you, Jake. Will you stop controlling things? I'm trying to, Julie. Well, if I'm 35, make me feel 35. OK, you're 35. Wow. That was a kick in the head. What does 55 feel like? The kick gets a little lower. Oh, but this looks righter. We seem like a couple now. Promise me you'll live a very long time, Jake. Why? Because I need you to. Otherwise, it will keep bringing me back. Well, I'm not the only one who thinks of you. No, but you think of me the way I want to be thought of. Your telephone is ringing. No, it really is in your life, not mine. See? Oh, yeah. Hello? Oh, hi. Yeah, I, I heard you were back in town. You know what I think heaven is, Jake? It's how you're remembered by the one you love most. Julie, it's Maggie. Do you mind if I speak with her? Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. Um, wh where, where have you been? Ballooning? Oh, in France. Oh, I thought you meant you were getting fat. Where, where are you now? That's, li that's only two blocks from here. Well, uh, yeah, no, I'd love to, I'd, but I have some work I was finishing up. And, uh, get Maggie, can you just, can you hold on one second? What? No. See her, Jake. Let her come. It'll be good for you. What, with you here? I just went through that with a girl named Sheila, who's probably under sedation by now. I'll leave when she gets here. 
She's the one who called Jake. It must be really important to her. Uh, Maggie? Yeah, that'd be fine. Um, yeah, oh, all right, so I'll see you in about ten minutes. Okay, I, yeah, I am too. Uh, okay, bye. Uh, are you, are you sure you don't mind my seeing Maggie? My time with you will come again. Why, have you heard something? Did they mention dates or anything? Don't worry, I'm in no rush. Well, it was really good seeing you today. And I'll, we'll, we'll, well, we'll see. Aren't you forgetting something? What? I'm waiting for my birthday present. Birthday present? I didn't get you anything. Yes, you did. You just haven't delivered it yet. What? Molly. You promised me I could see Molly on my birthday. Oh, I can't do that now, Jules. Oh, Jake, you promised. Huh? Suppose you die. This could be Molly's only chance to see me. You have to do it, Jake. Maggie's coming up. In ten minutes. We can cover a lot in ten minutes. Yeah, but I'm trying not to do this anymore. Come on. All right, okay, all right, all right, all right. Come here, come on over here. Um, sit down here. No, let's not go. No, 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 sit there. Come back here. Go, go stand way back here. Go, 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 go way back there. Why? I don't know why. I'm nervous about this. I feel like I'm playing with fire here. I'll take care of it, Jake. I'll treat it with respect. All right, okay. Uh, all right, all right. All right. Uh, here we go. Hi, Dad. You okay? Yeah, and I'm fine. Yeah. Good. So why am I here? Well, this may seem very weird to you, Molly. What is it? There's somebody here. Hello, Molly. Oh, it's all right, Molly. Don't be afraid. Jake, she's having trouble with it. Help her to accept it. Oh, Molly, I'm sorry. All right, I, di I didn't think this out. Let me start over. No, it's all right. Now I understand. <laughs> now it's fine. Are you sure? Yes, positive. Hello, Mom. Hello, Molly. <laughs> Would you like to sit down here with me? Yes, of course. I have a million things to ask you. <laughs> it's like meeting someone you always heard about, like a movie star. I feel like asking you for your autograph. <laughs> Oh, I love the way you look, Molly. We have a classy-looking daughter, don't we, Jake? You sure do, Julie. Do I seem very different from the way you remembered me? You're much prettier than your picture. And you're younger than I thought you'd be. Well, your father touched me up a bit. I didn't even realize that we were wearing the same jacket. I know, isn't it great? Your father prints them out like Xerox coffees. Oh. I love your rings. Where did you get them? Well, this one was yours? Yes, that was my favorite. And this one Dad gave me on my 16th birthday. And this one was for Maggie. And this one a friend gave me. Okay, <laughs> let's hear about this friend. This is the kind of news I came back for. Who is he? Well, he's at Yale. He's a set designer in the drama department. You'd like him? <laughs> I'm sitting here listening to a conversation that never existed. And never could. And yet it all seems so real to me. And from the looks of it, it's so real to them, too. And I'm thinking, if I can create this, this, this intimacy, why can't I experience it in my own life? What was the best thing we ever did together, just you and me? Oh, gosh. So many things. I think mostly when I'd get sick and you'd crawl into bed with me and read books to me. I still know Bambi by heart. <laughs> and when we were in that hotel in Atlantic City, and you let me call room service and order my own dinner. Right, and then when I got out of the shower, I found two chocolate sundaes and a double cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all done this? Who hasn't thought about what it would be like to speak to a father or a mother who died five or 20 years ago? Would your mother still be proud of you? Would you still be your father's little girl? We've all played out that scene. My problem is I never stopped doing it. Oh, gosh. 
I never wanted it to end. I never wanted to grow up. I never wanted you to grow old. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's all right, oh, no, sweetheart. That was a terrible thing for me to say. No, it was terrible for me to leave. You must have been so angry. I'm not angry. I just never knew where you went to. It happened so fast. I kept thinking you'd come back, but all I had was your picture by my bed. And I would talk to it every night. Sometimes I could hear your voice so clear, so comforting, telling me not to worry, telling me you missed me, telling me you loved me, until one day I stopped hearing it. And I would call out for you, but there was no answer. I would shake the picture. Talk to me. Talk to me. But it would just stare back at me. And I felt so cheated. I'm sorry about that, Molly. I'm sorry about all the years we didn't have together. This has gone too far. What the hell have I done here? It's getting late, Molly. Maggie's going to be here soon. No, not yet. Tell me other things, Mom. Anything. Just keep talking. I can't, hon. Maggie's coming. We have to go. <laughs> We've taken enough of your dad's time. It's not dad's time. It's our time. I don't want you to go. We'll do this again. Another time? What other time? I've been waiting for this day since I was ten years old. I don't want her to go. Your dad kept his promise to me. He'll keep it to you, too. I'll come again. I swear. No! You said that to me in New Hampshire, and you never came back. I don't trust you anymore. I don't trust anybody anymore. It's a mistake, Molly. Believe me. I need you to fill in the 11 years we never had together. Please don't stop talking, Mom. You can't make up 11 years. Not like this. This, this is just a game. We can't keep playing this game forever. I didn't ask to play it. You brought us here. We've both waited 11 years, and you give us 10 lousy minutes together? Why did you do it? It's so cruel. So what are you going to do now? It's your game. You get us out of it. Why didn't you leave well enough alone? What is it you wanted to see? I wanted to see you both happy. By doing the impossible? It's not so impossible. I saw you both laughing. I saw you both together again. It made me happy. I think you're the one who doesn't know it's a game. So what happens now? Do we go back in some corner of your mind and wait another 11 years for the second installment of the years that never happened? You're not giving him a chance, Molly. Maybe this is the wrong time to do this. Let's stop it. He can't stop it. He loves it too much. He'll sit here alone, afraid to get on with his life, because this is his life. Isn't that right, Dad? So people tell me. Then please let go of this. I will, eventually. No, not eventually. Eventually is now, today. It's time you gave it up, Dad. I feel like somebody's taking my toys away from me. Everybody gives up their toys sometime. Come on, Mom, let's go. Don't leave together. Why not? The neighbors? It's too final. Just... just leave. Say you have to go back to school. Say I'll see you next week. <sighs> Why not? What am I doing here? I've got exams tomorrow. Love you, Dad. See you next week. Bye, Mom. It was really good seeing you again. You look great. Can I kiss her goodbye? I won't make an offer out of it. I love you, baby. Oh, I love you, Mom. Thank you for my present, Jake. Next time you're getting a nice bottle of wine. It's Maggie. You better go. Not yet. There's still one more thing I want from you. Please, don't ask to see Bark. He died when he was 12. You don't have to do a thing. This one is my fantasy.
Goodbye, Jake. Jake. How are you feeling? Oh, uh, relaxed in a tense sort of way. How about you? Nonchalantly nervous. You're looking very fit. Are you are you uh, you still jogging? No, treadmill. Uh, I don't have the same urge to get somewhere. Well, you can sit if you like. I think that's your half of the sofa there. Can I get you anything? A, a drink, a cup of coffee, or...? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, I'm meeting someone for lunch. Phew. Well, I'm glad we got the first part of that conversation over with. Is it over uh, already? I was so busy looking at you. I missed it. You are funny, Jake. And what about you? Are you, uh... Are you happy? Not really. But at least I'm not... Running around like mad, trying to find it everywhere from here to Calcutta. Calcutta? <laughs> it reminds me of that three-way conversation we had with Sheila. That was something, wasn't it? Who's Sheila? Oh. Sorry, I'm, I'm having a minor lapse in my spatial concepts. You still can't keep them out, huh, Jake? God, the irony of it. Of what? That I'm still attracted to the very thing in you that drove me out of here? That sounds promising. I didn't make any. I just wanted to see you, to talk to you. Do I sense something important is about to get said? I think the man that I'm going to have lunch with today is going to propose to me. I see. Well, that... That qualifies as important. That's, that's probably in the same category as my house is on fire. How do you, uh, how do you feel about it? Scared. If I go through with this, Jake, it would be over between us. Well, it would certainly slow us down. What does he do? He listens to me. He pays attention. You mean for a living? It's funny. I thought things might have changed in six months. They have. You found a guy who listens better than I do. You're using words again, Jake. Listen to the feelings. There's pain going on here. I don't just speak words. I speak feelings and emotions. I care. I love. I'm miserable. I'm angry. I'm confused. Am I getting close? Part of you is standing there listening and talking, but there is the other part of you, the writer, the observer, who was watching the two of us detached as hell. And he is the one who is getting in our way. He is the one who is not involved in our problem. I don't observe because I choose to. I'm not a writer because I'm good at it. I write to survive. It's the only thing I do that doesn't reject me. My characters are the only ones I know who love me unconditionally because I gave them life. Well, I'm not that selfless. And you didn't give me life, Jake. My mother did. I've got to go. Why can't I understand what it is you want? I thought I was getting close. If you're willing to settle for close. Wait, wait. Five more minutes. For what? I don't know. Something. A, a, a miracle. You really believe in miracles? I'm banking my life on it. What restaurant will you be in? Geppetto's, but I don't think they serve miracles. They do on Wednesdays. And guess what today is? Goodbye, Jake. Are you going to say yes to this guy? I'll figure it out in the taxi. Damn it. 
Did I screw this up, Julie? What did I do wrong? Julie? Can you hear me? Karen? Karen, where are you? I need to talk to you. Eat it. I need a two-minute session. I'll lie on the bed. You can ask me anything you want. Come on, will you? I need, a, I need a miracle, and I need it fast. Sheila. Sheila, you think you can... No, not Sheila. Molly. Molly? I don't... I'm... I'm... Hello? Eat it. Nobody's... Hello? Hello? What is that, Guys and Dolls? She's playing revivals now? Wait a minute, you think this could be the miracle? Help me out. I gotta get to the hospital. My wife is very sick. I'm busy. Take a cab. I can't find one. Come on, she's just been operated on. Look, I'll give you anything you want. Please, anything. All right, come on, get in. Where's the hospital? I'll tell you what, I had to stop at Geppetto's restaurant first, 84th and 3rd. Can I help you, sir? No, only she can help me. He didn't show up. He jilted you. He got scared. He's in the men's room. Oh, okay. So the moment I show up, he's in the men's room. I tell you, it's a miracle. Jake, there's something I want to say. No, wait, listen. I called them and they didn't come. Karen, Edith, Molly, Julie, none of them showed Jake. up. I'm telling you, miracles are busting Jake. out all over. I've been thinking about what wait, you wait, said. Wait, 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 listen. Say to me, Jake, what is it you want? Please, Maggie, before he comes back. Jake, what is it you want? Maggie. I want Maggie. Can you get me Maggie, Maggie? To do what? To marry me. We're already married. No, we only had half a marriage. Your half. I haven't kicked in with my half yet, but I'm ready to now. You want to hear something? Listen to this. Part of you is standing there listening and talking, but there's a part of you, the writer, the observer, who's watching the two of us detached as hell, and he's the one who's getting in our way. He's the one who's not involved in our problem. Did I get it right, Maggie? I listened to every word you said, didn't I? I do get carried away sometimes. Yeah, well, you can work on that. That's what I wanted to say. I want to work on it. I think we're closer than I thought. <laughs> you are so smart. What's he doing in the men's room so long? I turned down his proposal. He was looking a little pale. I knew it! I knew it! Miracles everywhere I look! Come on, come on, let's go. Here, take this. Would you tell the gentleman that the young lady had to go home with her husband? No hard feelings. I don't want to make a fuss. He should take care of his bill, and this is for you. Thank you, sir. What is it, Jake? Nothing. I'll be right with you. Excuse me. Can you, uh... You see any women at that table? I said, no one, sir. And let's keep it that way. Where are we going? Wherever you want, wherever you say. Are you sure this is what you want? It's what I've always wanted. I was just too busy talking to tell you. We're going to make this work, aren't we, Jake? We will, we will, we will, we will, we will, we will, we will. Nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. <laughs>